in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. We remain resolute in our commitment to feed God's people. It says, and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart, which will feed you in knowledge and understanding. The primary assignment of a man of God is to ensure that believers who have been saved and have been planted in a spiritual family that they are fed and taught the word of God and the content of that word is doctrine we have discussed it here doctrine is the course curriculum that makes for the growth of the believer and week in week out we continue to explore different facets of the kingdom life to the end that number one we get to know the Lord the more then we understand his ways then we obtain grace and help from god to represent him very effectively hallelujah praise the name of the lord tonight um, i'll begin a teaching that i believe will end up as a series because um we may not be able to exhaust it tonight and in an attempt to explain the things that happen around our society you know i have i have said this and, and i thank god we have people here politicians business people members of parliament so i'm happy because every time we learn this we are happy because we can take this there is there is um we we can apply this and then it helps not just towards kingdom advance but also towards nation building any nation and any territory is a reflection of number one the health and the strength of the spiritual conviction of the people that live within that territory every territory is a reflection of the spiritual conviction or otherwise of the people that live within that territory which invariably is a product or is a reflection of the quality of the spiritual voices that feed the people so when you pick anyone in abuja or any part of the world at all at random and engage the believers there their level and extent of spiritual understanding is a report card that shows the quality of the shepherds within that territory if there is a problem with the understanding of the average christian then the men and the women of god within that territory are to be blamed that means there is an imbalance or there is error that is coming from the pulpit because people are largely they will act in honor to their convictions which come from the propositions that come from the altar so if we want to correct the living what we see in our society among other factors we have to re-examine the kind the extent and the quality of spiritual information that comes from the pulpit effective living is a product of effective thinking when people think wrong they will live wrong when they think right they will live right the bible says this sign shall follow them that believe that means anything following you is proof of what you believe you don't when you are tired of seeing what has been following you you don't drive it away physically change what you believe everything that follows you comes in honor to something you are believing 
if trouble is always following you it may be empowered by demons but principally there is something about your understanding and your perspective and your approach to life that authorizes those ills to follow you if favor goodness and mercies if, if all these these positive attributes are following you there is something that your understanding is doing as far as making for their continuity around your life are we together so our assignment principally is to expose us to what the bible calls the ways of god and let me tell you this in as much as the curriculum that makes for our growth is finite um there is there is a vast body of knowledge spiritual knowledge we need to learn about who we are in christ the reality of our positional advantage our, our oneness with christ we need to understand the economic system of the kingdom this is what makes for the supplies and the provisions of the saints we need to understand the fact that we live in a world that is plagued by demons principalities and powers jesus and scripture did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that we are not alone there is another species of beings that cohabit with us and whether we are prepared or not they are interested in our affairs and so he teaches us how to manage our living such that we live victorious in spite of satan and his cohorts are we together we need to learn principles that make for territorial dominion i told you that the gospel is divided into two there is the message that saves then there is the ideology that transforms if the only thing you receive is the message that saves you are saved but your territory may not be safe s-a-f-e -E. it takes the ideology of the gospel the value system of the kingdom to permeate systems and structures so that now christ and his purposes are institutionalized not just in the hearts of men but across every strata of human activities this is the only way that christ becomes enthroned not just in our hearts but in our environment it's unfortunate all over the world and even in our nation right now we're in we're in serious times of crisis from economic crisis to high rates of crime terrorism i just returned from zaria and um, sadly and unfortunately the north is beginning to be um, a reflection of something that we have prayed never to happen did you know that everyone terrorist every one troublemaker was once a baby in the hand of a woman is that true something transformed those individuals from babies to become now living like beasts every deliverer was once a baby in the hands of a woman including jesus in the flesh that means when we see the decadence in society the decadence in society is a reflection of something that is wrong and and please just allow me to express my passion for a few minutes trying to solve societal problems by just coming up with corrective measures as it were will not ultimately achieve that goal is that true thank god for the prison cells thank god for the police thank god for the military but fundamentally you need to understand that the things that continue to plague society historically is proof that something fundamentally is wrong with the value system of the people generally speaking we live in honor to and of our convictions whatever you believe eventually you will live it out is that true when you meet a terrorist now and interview him he will give you an interesting perspective about life his perspective and his conviction is what motivates his passion to cause mayhem and destruction and even at the detriment of the advancement of his society he believes he's doing right if you meet a good man who is blessing people lifting people educating people behind what he's doing 
there is a value system there is a conviction is that true that means we have to be careful we have to carefully fashion and design the value systems that we communicate because value systems are dangerous people will live in honor of and to those value systems when people reject god in mass there must be a poisonous information that is being sold that makes god look like a nuisance to civilization when revival breaks out in as much as is the power of god healing signs and wonders but let me tell you there is something that must have been done right and people embrace the value they see the importance and the value of jesus christ we, when you live in a society that is lawless a society that does not honor the rule of law a society that is careless and does not care people live very irresponsible lives is a reflection of a faulty value system i always like to understand the motivation behind things more than the actions you really solve problems when you dig into the motivation behind things when you address symptoms symptoms do not provide effective solutions you have to move past the symptoms and then address the solutions when you see someone for instance please look up you see someone walking in failure living a defeated life trying to address the problem the obvious problem may not bring the final solution when you dig in and dig in and dig in eventually you will find out that there is a spiritual problem with that person maybe he has rejected jesus maybe he has refused the gospel now for someone who has refused the gospel the the probability for a life of defeat is 100 percent regardless how successful that person is anything can happen because there is no system of security it is only the name of the lord that is a strong tower and it is only the righteous that is allowed to run to it not anybody not god's creation that door does not just open his name becomes a strong tower when it you are the righteous you run into it and you are safe hallelujah so i thought tonight to begin um an exposition on what i titled the antichrist system now it's, it's going to be a series but i'll give them different topics but i just thought tonight to open us up to this mystery babylon this godless system that is the software that is behind the eels in our world it's important to understand that men have been programmed institutions have been programmed and we must carefully detect that spiritual software that is at the back of the decadence of families of territories of institutions of lives and so on and so forth are we in agreement praise the name of the lord revelation chapter 11 and verse 15 thank you jesus revelation chapter 11 and verse 15 the bible says and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever so i begin my teaching with the end of the story that whether we like it or not one day this prophecy will happen that a day will come regardless the arrogance of kings regardless the pride of men the power and the might of jesus the one who we have so hailed will compel this world that is a part of his creation to come into alignment and the kingdoms of this world must become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever he shall reign forever he shall reign forever and ever he shall reign forever he shall reign forever he shall reign forever 
as it is now there's still confusion all across the world who is really lord there are nations that are fighting for supremacy the world powers fighting themselves but the bible tells us in psalm 24 and verse 1 the earth is the lord's the resources there it's called the fullness then the walls and the inhabitants they that dwell therein they all belong to him one more scripture please hmm. third john chapter 1 and verse 2 please just follow carefully let's read together if you can see it projected ready one to read please beloved i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers i've done a teaching around this but you see this is a very serious statement even as your soul prospers even as your soul prospers that it is good that you prosper and be in health but ensure that whilst you prosper your soul also prospers can we add two more scriptures mark chapter 8 mark chapter 8 from verse 36 jesus is teaching now mark chapter 8 and verse 36 for what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world jesus is speaking business now profit he's talking gaining a language that everybody wants to hear what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul there is a system that has controlled our civilization until now in fact let me start it this way the bible clearly shows us that there is a conflict of two kingdoms everyone please say two kingdoms yes that men do not just live like animals we are not just homo sapiens there is a contention between two kingdoms the bible calls one the kingdom of darkness is that true and then the other the bible calls the kingdom of god's dear son so we know for a fact that there are two kingdoms all men regardless religion regardless your sociological orientation the bible is very clear as to the fact that we are immersed in a conflict that is between two kingdoms first information second information the bible clearly lets us know that this clash and this vendetta between these kingdoms predate our existence so we're in the middle of something that is older than our appearing here the war did not start with us it did not start from us are we together revelation chapter 12 please and verse 7 john was caught to the third heavens when he was banished theologically speaking john was banished to die when he would not be burned in the hot oil and all of that and then he was banished to an island called patmos and there he received the revelation of jesus christ and now in chapter 12 from verse 7 these were some of the things that were shown john remember the angel told him right for these words are faithful and true then when we get to chapter 4 chapter 5 he was told come up hither and i will show you so john was taken down memory lane and he was told here an old story this is the fact that it's in revelation does not mean it's a new story this is a very old story are we together and there was war in heaven i can preach all night on that sentence that means there is no life that is spared in heaven there was war if there was war in heaven then it is not unusual to have war around your life even in heaven where god dwells there was war there was war in heaven and then the bible says michael and his angels fought against the dragon the dragon fought with his angels uh oh his angels in heaven this should already give you a description of the kind of adversary we are dealing with that in heaven satan sold an idea to the angels 
that they saw God sitting on his throne in spite of the splendor of heaven there was something Satan told them that they preferred his authority than the one who sits on the throne whoever has that kind of power you should pay attention to him follow me this night we are, we are, we are on a journey that God will grant us grace over now we're examining because when we talk about earth earth is marred with all kinds of prejudices politics and the rest so let's look at heaven where Christ himself is seated all this rubbish is going on in heaven the one who sits on the throne is there the miracle worker the way maker and yet there is a treacherous fellow selling an idea and according to scripture next verse let's go to verse 8 that he fought and he prevailed not the fact that satan could fight god remember I, <laughs> please look up look up let me explain something to you we are tracing where this that has destroyed our world we are tracing where it came from politicians understand this this is what keeps you for hours in the house of assembly trying to come up with policies that correct the madness in society it matters this is not a christian message this is a message that eventually leads to national transformation it, it, this is not a Christian perspective we have to trace where the problem is coming from as at the time this problem started there was no religion as at the time this problem started there were no men of God as at the time this problem started there were no educational institutions so everything we are blaming is not the real problem follow this please give out that scripture the Bible says once upon a time it leaves us with a story that is a compass to give us wisdom on how to correct the ills in society and produce a territory that glorifies God restores human dignity and makes advancement that reflects the love of the Father are we together so there is a problem we are trying to diagnose right now that Satan in the presence of God because of treachery and treason that he actually came to a point where he sold an idea we'll be reading shortly but that one third of the angels now we do not know how many angels are in heaven the Bible does not give us the figure but at least we know the ones who fell with Lucifer one third of these angels what gave him the audacity i will tell you satan's creation and satan's assignment is what gave him the audacity to believe i wish i had time we would have dealt with what we have called the parable of talents have you read the parable of talents that says there was a man who came and gave on to three people five talent two talent and one talent that thing you see is not just a parable talking about money there is prophecy hidden in it it reveals something that happened years ago but anyway let's go back to our subject for tonight so satan prevailed not read on please the bible says neither was found any place for him in heaven so he's about to be displaced now and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent even at that time he was old called the devil so that there's no confusion and satan which deceived the whole world he was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him so this is where the relocation happened now from heaven came to the earth next verse and i heard a loud voice in heaven saying now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our god day and night 11 and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony so satan was cast down from heaven he came to the earth 
Now watch this. Sin one tells us that Satan rebelled against God. Michael fought him. Sin two shows us the misery and the disgrace of Satan. Is that true? We see Satan cast down in shame. In fact, it says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. For Satan, that dragon has come down with great fury. The next time we hear about Satan, everybody on earth was under his control. What a man. What a spirit. Really, not a man. Satan is not a man. If he was a man, there would have been a possibility for his sins being forgiven. Because salvation is for men. So Satan is not a man. That's one of the reasons why he cannot be saved. Salvation is for men. Are we together now? So Satan is cast to the earth. Follow me to Matthew chapter 4. Jesus now comes in the flesh as the son of Mary. Matthew chapter 4. Let's start from verse 1, please. And Jesus was led up of the spirit. This was after his baptism. He was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. That same devil now. So his audacity did not end. He still believes. Anywhere he sees God, he still has the strength. What a stubborn man. After many, many years. You see that? So that you will know Satan's determination to destroy you. When you see who else he has tried, you will know how serious he can stay to destroy you if you give him room. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says afterwards, Jesus now was unhungered. Verse 2. When the tempter came to him, let's look at the context of the temptation. He said, number one, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered Jesus now and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We'll discuss this later. Then the second temptation, watch this. Satan take it him. Take it who? What does it mean to take somebody? This was the guy who was cast down to the earth. You would think it was game over. And by the time we get here, Satan has that audacity to take him to a holy city and to set him at the pinnacle of the temple. Next verse. And he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Next verse. And Jesus said unto him again, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now, I'm interested in the last temptation. If you are a Christian and you are interested in what I'm saying, please help me read. Ready? One, two, read. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the kingdoms uh -huh, and the glory of them. Stop, please. Satan, the first temptation has to do with your personal needs. Hunger, feed yourself. The second temptation has to do with your worship and your spirituality. Please keep that scripture there. But the third temptation now has to do with the kingdom and the glory thereof. Satan took Jesus into a high mountain. This is not just climbing a hill. No, this is a prophetic language. What kind of mountain is it that when you stand, you see the glories of the whole world? This is a spiritual location. This is not a physical place that he took him maybe like a mountain, an altitude. No. Next verse. Verse 9. Watch this. And he saith unto him, we finally arrived my place of interest. All these things I will give thee. <sighs> what a businessman. This guy was cast from heaven empty in shame. By the time Jesus arrives his own earth, Satan is so wealthy, he's saying, don't think I am empty. Just bow to me and I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. If you do not understand this, you will not understand the system that controls the activities of men. That means all the glory that Satan acquired from Adam, he was not interested in it. There was something else that was greater than that to him. The worship. So when Jesus came, he said, let me save you trouble. 
let me save you going through the rigor of three and a half years the cross the grave just bow to me and i will give you these glories verse 10 and jesus said unto him get thee ten satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shall thou serve this gives us a clue to what satan has been looking for that satan is not looking for the child of a barren woman that's not what he's looking for satan is not looking for the prosperity of a rich man that's not what he's looking for satan is not looking to cut short the life of someone all these things are not the things he's looking for there is something else that he's looking for you need to know what motivates the passion of satan this is it he met jesus and said instead of telling god on the throne to bow since you are his image just bow and i will give you everything are you getting that now watch this this also reveals the character of satan's way of doing business because here we see that satan is a businessman make reference to what i'm saying what shall it profit a man if he will gain and lose for you to do business there must be demand and supply and there must be people at the at both ends so satan is a businessman he's not just an accuser and that there is the character of his business are you seeing that now he acquires everything and tells you the only thing i need from you is your allegiance and you will have it and jesus said get thee behind me how did satan get this when you go to genesis chapter 3 when satan was cast down and the earth was judged we dealt with this already genesis 1 verse 2 there was darkness there was void there was formlessness across the face of the earth is that true and then god said light be elohim said light be and there was light and then recreation not the original creation the original creation did not happen in genesis chapter 1 the genesis account was not the first creation the Genesis account was a recreation after the judgment of Lucifer. It was the judgment of Lucifer that led to the chaos that we see. Are we still together? Now Genesis chapter 3, please give it to us. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. It may interest you to know that the serpent initially was a beast. A beast is a four-footed creature. Can you see? He was subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Notice how Satan destroys. Because according to God's ranking, watch this now, when God gave man dominion, the seraphims are headed by the cherubims. The cherubims are headed by the woman the woman is headed by the man man is headed by god this is the organogram now it does not mean i just mean in ranking of honor you get what i'm saying now this is how it is so satan could not have the power to talk to adam there was no reference of a discussion between satan and adam until he fell but what satan wanted was with adam but the only way he could come to Adam was to come to his Eve. You will now know why he's still disturbing the Eve of the second Adam. The church. Because he's looking for what is in that Adam still. But he cannot confront that Adam again because he's now been exalted Lord and Christ. And there is no space for him. So he's still using the same Genesis strategy. He wanted what Adam was given. But he had to come through Eve let's study the character of that temptation the moment he met the woman he said yeah had god said so the first point of probe is the word of god when satan comes to you he wants to find out what god said because the instance of god's word is where his ministry starts he wants to know what did god say concerning your life what did god say concerning your family if god has not said anything concerning you satan has no business with you he will pass you like this you will call him he will not even come believe me you can say how are you and he says i'm busy 
but the moment god speaks concerning you satan is ready he's 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 ready to stay and find out could that be why attack started in your life the moment prophecy came that there is something you are a child of destiny could that be why africa is under this plague because there is an end time word upon africa that we are that continent that will return christ back that rejected stone Just help those under the anointing. Please pay attention. Give us that scripture again. So he questioned the woman. Had God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman replies, verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Of course, I don't want to go into the whole theological thing. You know that eating there is a prophetic statement. It doesn't necessarily mean physical eating. But because we are, that's not what we are dealing with, let's just let it be so. And he said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, verse 3. But the fruit of the tree, which in, is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So there is death tied to that tree. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Let me tell you how Satan attacks. Number one, he studies what God has said to you. Then he brings in a proposition that makes God look like a scammer in your life. Notice now. Is it really true that you can thrive in our world without corruption? Even God knows. And he sugarcoats that truth. Please keep the scripture there for god don't know are you seeing what satan is telling the woman now he's saying there is something god is hiding from you and he was not entirely wrong there was an information god did not want man to necessarily know is the information that was hidden in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil but it was for the safety of the man there are things god says it should not concern you is for your safety for god doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof what will happen your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil so he's saying that god is not sponsoring your advancement and your growth he's insecure there is something he's trying to hide from you watch what happened when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof now let me tell you this her eating of the fruit was not what made her fall she had already fallen her eating of the fruit was a was proof that something had entered her and once in a while let me settle this controversy where men blame women the bible says that when she ate she gave to her husband who was with her so Adam was there with her. She didn't just eat it and go and call him. No, Adam was there with her. The woman fell because she was deceived. The man fell because of love. Apostle Peter taught us Adam was not deceived. It was the woman who was deceived. So also, the second Eve was deceived. But the second Adam was not deceived. What made him leave heaven to the earth? Love. You see that now. The second Adam was not, it was not a, a deceit that brought him. He willingly gave up the throne and came down as proof of his love for his bride. Are we together? when that happened let's look at the punishment and then we'll begin to build very quickly and he did eat verse 7 the bible says the eyes of them both were open now notice what happened do you know what this means that the eyes of them both it didn't just mean they were enlightened no there was a rearrangement of god's spiritual structure of how man should perceive it was always the spirit of man first is that true and then the mind and then the body the spirit was always in control the will emotions intellect what we call the mind was next and then the body executed whatever the mind did and the mind was subject to the spirit this act rearranged everything 
and you will see there that the first thing that followed was you will see attributes of emotions they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves and made themselves aprons verse 8 and they had the voice of god walking in the cool of the day the hebrew rendition says and they had the talking spirit walking in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord this was a man who god would come in the cool of the day and fellowship with him the creator and his creature now man was running away from the presence of god and he hid amongst the trees this was the first man-made solution the first man-made solution we are aware of are you seeing where the first solution came from many other solutions have tried to come to solve the problem the first man-made solution to the sin problem and the problem of separating from god was to run away from god and to come up with a temporary solution and adam the lord called adam look at how god respects authority when god gets to the garden he does not say all of you come mm -mm. man i left you as head and you are the first i will speak to there's no mention that god spoke to eve until adam gave him permission look how god honors this structure and the lord god called adam and said unto him adam and he said where art thou verse 10 and he said i heard your voice in the garden but i was afraid afraid of what because i hid because i was naked verse 11 so this is where all deception comes from and he said who told you adam what did you allow to get into your thinking this is not part of the content of what i gave you who have you been listening to because your life is now executing an information I, I, am i still making sense the moment god saw adam's action he didn't say why did you do this he said who told you in other words your action is only a slave to your thinking you have listened to someone so when you see the armed robber stealing it is not the stealing when you see the terrorist killing it is not the killing when you see the person corrupt it is not the corruption the real question is who told you what is the institution that is feeding your understanding when a man beats his wife calls her idiot stupid maims the children abuses everybody the real question is not why are you beating her the hand is honoring something here the real question is who told you respectfully speaking when a politician sits in office and siphons resources that should be for roads siphons resources that should be for several other things the real question is not what took your hand there is who told you this is from the mouth of god himself this is how god addresses problems he does not address problems by looking at actions he addresses problems by looking at the motivation You're, you are honoring a conviction when you know this you will know how to help people whether in the prison the correctional centers and all around that's why i said this is not just a message for christians the moment you find people walking in a way that should not be the first part of call is not their action the first part of call is to attack the information that is creating their conviction until that information is corrected they will always act in honor to their convictions so when there is a high rate of irresponsibility among people within a society it's not about why are you not working or why are you lazy go back and find out the voice that is feeding them who told you please give us the scripture who told you that you were naked has thou eaten of that tree whereof i commanded that thou should not eat the first demonstration of irresponsibility from the bible are you ready to see it the man said the woman that's where adam lost his authority every time you blame something else you transfer authority to it that's how adam transferred authority to eve you will now see that it was after this statement god started talking to eve And the man said the woman that thou gavest to be with me in other words is between you and her if you did not bring her here i'll be all right you see what is wrong with the man 
and she gave me of the tree and i did eat and the lord said to the woman the first time he's talking to the woman after the man sealed his sense of irresponsibility he said what is this that thou hast done this is how the woman gave satan authority the woman said the serpent if the woman kept quiet she will be head over man immediately the woman said the serpent beguiled me and i did eat let me tell you how satan became the god of this world and the lord said to satan because you have done this out of the four of them the only person who did not talk was the person who eventually carried the authority man spoke transferred his authority to the woman the woman spoke transferred her authority to the serpent the serpent kept quiet so when jesus was with pontius pilate wanting to restore the authority while they were talking what did he do this also means there is a dimension of dominion that is expressed in silence generally speaking when people talk too much it is considered that they are irrational and there is a level of immaturity this is true whether in government in business in family there is a level of maturity notice when they came and met jesus a woman who was caught in adultery what did he do he kept quiet and was just writing and he got off from the standpoint of wisdom and said he who has no sin should cast the first stone end of discussion even a fool the bible says when he is silent he is considered wise Are we learning the ways of God? Next scripture. The Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of your life. 15. I will put enmity between the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Uh huh. Verse 16, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. 17, and unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying thou shalt not eat, cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of your life and then when you read it says tons and thistles will come out he drove them out of eden and then there was a cherubim and a flaming sword that protected eden from this instance we begin to see a manifestation of toiling of hardship is that true then the bible tells us that adam knew his wife and she bore him Cain and Abel. Now there's a lot of theological argument as to whether Cain and Abel were twins because the Bible does not make reference of Eve getting pregnant again. The next time the Bible tells us Adam knew his wife, she gives birth to a son called Enoch. And he says, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Is that true? But then you will notice something very strange. In every expression of the genealogy in the bible cain and abel are not mentioned read the genealogy in the gospel whenever it gets to enoch the son of adam the son of god so we know for sure that there is a mystery behind these two fellows cain and abel because when we get to the pauline epistles Paul begins to give us a revelation of Cain and Abel as an expression of the spirit and the flesh. Is that true? Abel being representing the spirit man and the spirit work and Cain representing the flesh. But that's not where I'm headed to. Now, we're in a situation where we want to investigate how this demonic software spread to come to our region now. Are we together now? The Bible says in the book of genesis chapter 6 let's look at genesis chapter 6 
be patient you'll begin to make sense to you genesis in fact let's start with genesis 4 genesis chapter 4 uh verse 16 let's look at genesis 4 16 the bible says and cain went out of the presence of the lord look up please very interesting statement it was a psalmist who said where can i hide from your presence so now he's saying cain went out of the presence of god do you know what this means cain willingly unsubscribed to the governing influence of heaven as an act of his will i am no longer interested in you god i'm not interested in your government i want to live my life by myself so we see direct rebellion against the government of god and he dwelt in the land of nod in the east of eden uh-huh and cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare enoch and he builded a city let me correct myself seth not enoch forgive me the the other son of a of adam is seth not enoch enoch was the first son of cain and he built a city wow so this is the first time we see that a man is attempting to build a city outside of the governing influence of the christ notice the character of the antichrist system the moment it rebels against god it seeks to build something a monument that honors self number two do you notice that cain built the city and he named the city after his son satan never says worship me he will always project something that came out of him revelation 13 you will see right the beast projects the antichrist and says to worship the antichrist remember that dragon satan will never come and say worship me directly as it were but he will build something that comes out from him and say worship me. this is the character of his subjugating men and bringing men under this antichrist system cain did not name the city after him he named the city after his son enoch from that time watch this rebellion people did not subscribe to the government of god again by the time we get to genesis chapter 6 give us genesis chapter 6 we'll read from verse 1 but verse 5 is the verse of emphasis genesis 6 and verse 1 look up please and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them uh-huh the bible says verse 2 the sons of god saw the daughters of men i don't want to get into this there is a big confusion around here but i know we talk about the nephilims the giant the the, the race of giants um, the nephilims are not the only race of giants but they are a unique race of giants because they came as as a product of intercourse between these fallen angels the daughters of men the, the children that came from that union they are called the nephilims giants they were superhumans an example was goliath of gath another example oak the king of bashan you read all these people and you see that they were they had superhuman qualities and can i surprise you there is still a remnant of that race here it is not expressed in their being huge is expressed by the unusual way they operate it is not only pure humans that are on earth there are other humanoid species on earth the bible tells us the coming of christ will be like the days of noah in the days of noah they were not alone there were other humanoid species that are now interacting you see science talks about ufos talks about all of these things they are not telling lies it is true there are all kinds of alien civilizations that have been here and others that are coming and attempting to corrupt the race when you know all of this you will know why the bible says wherefore god had so highly exalted him above and given him a name above every other name above every other name means there are many names and all those names carry levels of authority are we together next verse the sons of god saw that the daughters of men were fair and they took them to wives of all which they chose verse 3 and the lord said watch this now god is speaking my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he is, he is also his flesh and his days shall be a hundred and twenty years there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of god came into the daughters of men 
and they bear children to them the same became mighty men who were men of renown verse 5 this is where i wanted us to get to and god saw please look up believers and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every so this is the source of the wickedness the source of the wickedness is not just satan that this wickedness also depends on creativity his imagination has a role to play and the thoughts in his heart are you seeing that now god again is addressing this problem you see that every time god addresses man he does not just address what you are doing he addresses the fact that there a spirit has hijacked your imagination and your creativity follow me closely because we are going to get to a point where we see the value of transformation that for as long as the only thing we do is evangelism we are going to produce a very godless society to your shock that people are just saved and just remain there nothing happens to their mind their minds will still become fruitful tools that the devil will use evangelism transformation empowerment these are the keys that preserve evangelism brings them transformation changes them empowerment now engraces them and releases them to be effective people what has happened largely in the church is that we have done extremely well and by the privilege of god's grace we have to give it to the church we have done well in terms of evangelism but then we bring in a lot of harvest and we leave them there and they do not know what to do and satan says well the best would have been to stop you from receiving jesus but now that i cannot do anything about your decision i am glad that your mind is still a barren and a fruitful ground for me so you find out that there is no difference between a believer and a non-believer as far as societal transformation is concerned because an heir as long as he's a child he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all are we together please keep that scripture i hope god is helping us I know it's a long journey just be patient i need to be this meticulous so that we will really understand don't forget where we are coming from from heaven war in heaven satan comes down to the earth and we see that wickedness has filled everywhere we are examining how satan became so effective in this agenda that even though the people who were perpetrators of those wickedness they are long dead but the agenda still remains the same and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually so before a man becomes an armed robber he does not just go and pick up a gun ladies and gentlemen Satan comes to that man and before he introduces that concept to that man to destroy he first checks what is in his mind satan is a master with checking minds even when he's delivered jesus taught us he returns back and checks what is there if he finds the room swept clean but empty will he leave it empty he will go and gather other spirits so he finds a young man visionary great young man he finds a great woman visionary great woman but then he sees that there is no methodical system of transferring the principles the value system of the kingdom into that person are we together now what happens is that he now fashions a strategy of deception how does he deceive by proposing to you something that only god can give why do people take drugs why do occultists and all these people do what they do because they want to get high they and in that state they feel superior why do people join cultism in campuses because there is a proposition to them they let them know that if you join this occultic group there is some kind of immunity is that true why do we have all kinds of deadly clubs and societies 
today that destroy people because they, they attach some sense of significance to it. Why do you suddenly respect me when you see a nice shoe and a nice dress? It doesn't matter whether I'm a nice person or not because you have been trained that once you see that physical expression, it may mean that I am greater and more superior than someone. So if that is the system of marketing, a lot of young people who would have started their lives growing with honor and dignity to scale till they become responsible, they will find a way of getting tomorrow to arrive today. Since you have told me that the only way to respect me is when I wear a designer shoe, a designer watch, Satan now capitalizes on that mindset and says, look, I can show you a way. Ten years to be blessed is too long. Do you have that time? No. After all, God gives speed. You say it's true. So he will tell you. Now, listen, I'm going to tie it up with the scripture we also read. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? The mindset, the value system, the imagination of people hijacked by the power of darkness. So Satan does not mind whether you are Igbo he does not mind whether you are Yoruba. He does not mind whether you are, you are Hausa. He does not mind whether you are an American, an European, an Asian. He knows that we all have the same mind. So he began to trace all across the earth. What are the systems that speak to the mindset of people? He found that culture has a way of helping to frame mindset. So he became interested in culture. What part of that content can I use to preserve continuity of a demonic mindset? He found out that money seems to control loyalty. People can bow to you when you have money. So he went to the economy of the earth. He's called the king of Tyre. He sits there on that mountain to make sure you never get blessed with your soul healthy. When you come to him and say, I want to prosper, I want my children to go to church, or I'm a man of God, I'm trusting that financial resources be made available for kingdom activities. Satan says, all that is nonsense. There is only one condition. Bow to me. I hope you know that Jesus rejected that proposal, but it is not only Jesus Satan has taken to that mountain. There are many others that he held their hands. I want to become famous. I want the whole world to know me. And he says, come. There is a mountain where I show you the glories of the world. If it's money, you can have it. Anything, you can have it. The only thing I want from you is that you must pledge a covenant of allegiance that for as long as you enjoy these things, your worship will be to me. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.